Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Hope that you are all doing well and staying safe. Here is Mariam Shreff, a senior petroleum engineering student at the Lebanese American University. I would like to welcome you to the first live Q&A session with Dr. Gharib. Dr. Gharib has a PhD in petroleum engineering with, with a specialty in artificial lift and production engineering and operation. He is currently teaching and a staff member uh, at two universities in Egypt, the Future University and New Cairo Technological University. And meanwhile, he is the Global Technical Director, Artificial Lift System for United Lift Technologies. Dr. Gharib is a technical uh, and business professional with over 34 years of experience in the oil and gas industry, with long experience uh, in business development, sales, marketing, operation, teaching, and applications, engineering, uh, covering artificial lift design, operation, uh, troubleshooting, and optimization for major service companies, including Weatherford, United Lift Technologies, and Durkin, and oil field operations for a major operators, including any uh, GPC and Agiba. Dr. Gharib's field experience includes uh, the setup, installation, operations, uh, and optimization of different forms of artificial lift systems in the, in the MENA region, Romania, Turkey, and Brunei. Over the past years, he has done practical trainings for field staff and engineers in the oil and gas uh, production engineering and well operations for different major oil and gas companies in the MENA region, USA, Canada, Romania, Turkey, and Far East. Dr. Gharib was the SPE, Egyptian Czech Section uh, President, Program and Membership Chairperson. Also, he is the Membership Chairperson and Director of SPE International Artificial Lift and Gas Well Deliquification Technical Section. He published and presented over 55 technical papers, and he chairs several technical sessions for local and international conferences and workshops. Currently, Dr. Gharib is the committee member uh, for ATCE 2020 and 2021, and for the MA, uh, MEALF and SPE Middle East Artificial Lift Conference. Finally, Dr. Gharib is the uh, 2011 and 2020 recipients of the SPE Regional Technical Award in Production and Operation. So welcome Dr. Gharib and thanks for joining us today. And uh, on a final note, if you have any question related to the technical content of the presentation, please feel free to drop your uh, question during the session in the Q&A uh, box. And uh, Dr. Gharib, now the mic is yours. Thanks, Mariam. Thanks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, all of you, you know. Uh, it's my pleasure just uh, to have this session's Q&A just to follow up the last year, uh, 10 webinars we did for artificial lift. Uh, we are cover all the subjects, starting from introductions uh, and we cover all the other main type of artificial lift like road lift system, ESP, BCB, gas lift, um, plunger lift, uh, and all of them, you know. All that's already recorded and it's available for all of you just to, to review and to go through. Uh, Today, our session is will be mainly about Q&A, about this type of artificial lift. Today, we'll focus in, in one part of Q&A, you know, about the system component, uh, system application, uh, how to apply the system, how it's working, uh, what are the main functions, uh, what are the main application, what is the challenge, uh, and, and so on. Uh, the next session will be about uh, main problem facing artificial lift worldwide, such as the gas, sand, uh, scale, corrosion, and so on. In, in the next session, I will not be alone, you know. We'll join me, some of our main experts in that area, in order just to, to answer and cover all your questions, you know, and so on. If we need some more uh, session, we can do it, you know, for troubleshooting and so on. Today, as I said, you know, I will try just uh, to remind you to just a quick overview and introduction about what already covered within our webinars before, you know, uh, with our session before about artificial lift and uh, applications and so on, you know. Then let us just, you know, 
start this one. Anyone have any question before we start? It's, is this is okay with you? Is this what you're expected about Q and A, or I can just go ahead? Yes, doctor, you can go ahead. Okay, thanks. I'll try just quickly cover you know some of these main contents. Not all of them of them today. Today I'll try to give some hint about introduction about the system, method of artificial lift, road lift system, electric submersibles, the progressive cavity, and a little bit about gas lift and so on. And maybe next time, next session, first 15 minutes, I can give you some hint about jet pump and plunger lift. Okay. Let me just you know review with you about the concept of artificial lift. Why we need artificial lift? What do you mean by artificial lift? Remember, artificial lift wells, worldwide, it is the main type of production for oil and starting also to be for some gas wells. Currently, more than 92-93% of oil producing wells worldwide are artificially lift. In order to, to do that, let us to understand what's the principles, what I need from artificial lift, what type of artificial things I do for the well in order to make the well produce and so on. Before to do that, <clears throat> let us to know, you know what makes flow, any type of flow to flow. How is the flow to flow? What makes the flow to flow from one point to the other point? Usually the differential pressures. In order to, for the flow to move from one point to the other, you need to have a delta B differential pressure between starting point and the ending point, starting point higher than the ending point. How to apply that for our cases in the well reservoir and so on. If you look to these schematics in front of you, this is a reservoir, this is a wells, and this is a terminology. PR is a static or reservoir pressures. PWF is a bottom hole flow pressure. PH is the hydrostatic pressure for the fluid from the bottom up to the surface. This is hydrostatic pressure. B surface is the well head pressure, is the pressure required to move the fluids from the well heads to the separator, to the nearest separator, nearest station. Okay, then in order for the flow to flow from reservoir to inside the well, inside the well pool, the reservoir pressure must be higher than bottom hole flow pressure. Then if B reservoir higher than BWF, then I have a flow from reservoir to the oil pool. But this is not enough for me as a production, guys. In order to produce this flow, I need the flow to flow from the bottom to the surface. In order for the flow to flow from the bottom to the surface and then to the separator, then the bottom hole flow pressure must be what? The bottom hole flow pressure must be either equal or higher than the hydrostatic head plus the pressure loss inside the well pool plus the well head pressure required to move the fluid from the well head to the separators. If this equation is happening, then the well, what we call the flowing wells, there is no intervention, nothing we do. It's the flowing wells, it's capable to flow the required production. I need after I, deplete, I, I reduce the bottom hole flow pressure to the required bottom hole flow pressure according to my well productivity. And this bottom hole flow pressure will be more enough or equal the hydrostatic head plus well head pressure plus the flow line pressure, uh, pressure loss from here to there. What if the bottom hole flow pressure is not enough or less than all this component? hydrostatic head, surface pressure and pressure loss. In this case, you will need an artificial lift. You need a system, you need a device, you need a technique, whatever, you name it. Something I need to run inside the well in order to make this equation, it's equal like, like the top equation. In order to make this is vice versa, it's higher or equal bottom hole pressures, sorry, bottom hole pressure equal hydrostatic ones. Then in this case, I say I need an artificial lift if this is equation that's happening in this case. 
Okay, then in order to do that, let us to define what is artificial left. What is mean of artificial left? Artificial left, AL is artificial left. Refer to you to use any artificial mean, any artificial things, any artificial, whatever things you do, whatever you invented system to run downhole to allow the world to produce with the current conditions which it's not capable to produce as a flow. Then artificial lift, it's, it is a mean of use. Any artificial lift things mean to lift the produce or to produce the well with a desired production. Remember, because the well can be flowing wells and I need artificial lift. In a certain case, I see, yes, this is a flowing well, but I need artificial lift. If you are a petroleum engineer by background, then you know your, your well in flow performance. And for your well in flow performance or IBR curves, there is a relation between what's between the production rate and the bottom hole flow pressure. When the production rate increases, the bottom hole flow pressure decreases. At a certain point, the well can be produced with a low production in order to be able to lift flow to the surface. But if I increased the production, the bottom hole flow pressure will decrease, then the well will not be able to lift the flow to the surface. Then for flowing wells, in order to increase production from flowing wells, maybe I need an artificial lift device to run to the well. This is just, you know, an, a, a, a quick overview about artificial. How to achieve that? How to do that? And so usually, generally speaking, there is two different categories, two different systems, two different techniques. I use either I techniques a pumping system, bump just or some device running downhole in the walls at a certain depth. I, I have to design this. And this is the bump or this system, this device is doing two function, doing two operation downhole. First of all, it is reduce the bottom hole flow pressure against the reservoir. Why? It's to reduce the bottom hole flow pressure in order to allow the reservoir to produce the required production rate. But if I reduce the bottom hole flow pressure to reduce the desired production, then this bottom hole flow pressure will be not able to lift the fluid to the surface. Then in the same device, the same pump, the same techniques should be creating another pressure above the bump, what we call discharge pressure. This pressure above the bump, it is artificial bottom hole flow pressure, higher than the standard bottom hole flow pressure, capable to lift flow to the surface with a well head pressure, and we can move to the separate. Or just, you know, if you look, if you remember the, the previous equation, we said that bottom hole flow pressure should be higher or equal the hydrostatic head plus pressure loss plus well head pressure. And hydrostatic head is a function of the fluid gradient. And if I am able to reduce the fluid gradient, then I will reduce the hydrostatic head. In this case, the same bottom hole flow pressure will be capable to lift the fluid. And this is another group, what you call gas injection or gas lift technique or gas lift system. Then I have two main techniques for artificial lift, either to run pump or to run gas lift, or you can combine it. In some cases, I can be combined, but with a special application, special design, and, and so on. Then if we have a well like this, you know, this is a well. So this is a well in front of me, and this is a dead well, you know, the, the pressure here is not able to lift flow to the surface. And this is a hydrostatic gradient. If we are assumed this is a pressure, and this is a depth, and with the, with the depth, the, the hydrostatic gradient according to static bottom hole flow pressure, the pressure will be not capable to lift flow to the surface. Then I need to reduce the bottom hole flow pressure in order to allow the well to be flowing because this well has zero production. In order the well to produce, I must have bottom hole flow pressure less than the hydrostatic head. In this case, the, the, the fluid even, if I reduce the bottom hole flow pressure, will be not even reached to the previous uh, depths will be in lower depths because I reduce the pressure. In this case, I need artificial lift. Then I need to run a certain device at a certain depth in the well. I have to design what depths 
at what's the right depth and so on, you know. In this case, what we call, as the same depth, we call bump intake pressure. If I run the pump here, the intake pressure at this depth. Then the fluid will rise from reservoir up to the pump intake with the same gradients before. When I run the bump, I run divide here, what will happen for the bump? The bump creating more discharge pressures, higher discharge pressure and reducing the hydrostatic head, reducing the pressure here, you know, keeping the bottom hole flow pressure in this case only, you know, and this pressure will be capable to lift fluid to the surface with the well head pressure just to, to move the flow to the separate. The other case, if I reducing the fluid gradient, I reducing the hydrostatic head, the head of this flow by injecting gas. If I start to inject gas, then the average gradient of this flow, if I assume all this is oil with a flow gradient 0.35. If I start to inject gas, then uh, when you inject gas, the flow gradient in a state to be 0.35 PSI per foot will be 0.2 PSI per foot. Then according to that head, any pressure zero will be lifted the flow to the surface. Then how to select the right artificial lift? In order to do that, uh, all the type of artificial lift can be achieved in the same concept or will be a difference between artificial lift. In the markets, you will find really a uh, um, different type of artificial lift, different technique of artificial lift, different configuration of artificial lift. You know. In order to do that or selecting that, you need to understand each type of artificial lift. What is the range of application? How it is working? What is the, the constraint when you are running this way? What I need to know in order to select the suitable, the right type of artificial lift for me. First of all, I need to choose the optimum, just my target, my goal. I need to choose the optimum method, optimum artificial lift to do what? Optimum artificial lift capable to taking all the production from the bottom hole to the surface in what? In a safe and environmentally way. Then should be achieving that economically because I need to lift our, my wells economically. We are in the business. We are in oil and the gas, then we are in the business. Then I need to lift the flow economically. So not only economic, but efficiency with efficient production. Efficient production with economical, that means I have a long running life, I have low operating cost, I have safe operations, I have uh, environmentally friendly and so on. You know. In order to do that, then I need to choose the optimum method of artificial lift to do that. While I, I, I have to take into consideration what reservoir I have. Do I have a tight reservoir, depleted drive reservoir, water drive reservoir, what type of reservoir I have, then I design my artificial lift accordingly. Because remember, you design your artificial lift for the life of the world. When you change the artificial lift, then you are paying more money. Your economics will be not like when you choose one artificial lift for the type of the world. You need to know what the pro fluid properties, because not all type of artificial lift can be work uh, in the same way if the fluid properties change. What type of oil pores, type of oils, deviated oil, horizontal wells, what will bore configurations, uh, slim hole or just uh, monopores, uh, what type of casing, uh, <clears throat> what type of constraint, what's the environmental condition in the area, you know, and, and uh, there is a gas, there's a sour gas, uh, what, what environment condition is in this area, you know, economical, all the economical factors should be taken into consideration. Capital in, in investment, not only capital investment. One of the main important is operating cost, the operating in investment and so on. What the available safe surface facilities and what, what is the constraint in surface facility? What is the available surfacing equipment in case there is a failures for the equipment? Is, it, is, is there is a rig available near to me or I need to mobilize a rig, especially for offshore, remember, offshore in order to mobilize a rig, it's costly too much, you know. Do, is my well is in a remote area or just uh, is my well is uh, just among uh, big fields and there is a lot of surface equipment and so on, plus some other more 
more factor you need to take into consideration. I just put that in front of you, just, you know, to brainstorming, you know, when you design artificial lift, not consider only one, two factors. Try to consider as many as you can and then fine tuning, sorting and so on. Because while you are selecting design, maybe you will find one or two more of system capable to lift the web. Then in order just, you know, to screening between of them, then more of that factor in front of you will uh, help you in screening this and, <clears throat> and so on. What type? I say that there's two main group of artificial lifts, you know, in order to do that. For that reason, I, I, I put the previous slides in front of you. What's the factor I need to consider? How I, I, I can selecting this type of artificial lift? As I mentioned, there's two main groups either mechanical assist with using bombing, whatever, or formation assist with the gas, gas lift. I just assist the formation to, to produce the fluid by reducing the pack pressure, by reducing the, the bottom hole flow pressure in that. Generally speaking, this is the main type of artificial lift. There is any other type of artificial lift? Yes, there is some other type of artificial lift. Maybe it's not common, but under belong of that artificial lift system, you know, like a, ECP, electric submersible, hydraulic, hydraulic, there is two type of hydraulic, progressive cavity, reciprocating rod lift, gas lift, foam assist, plunger lift, and so on. Under each one, there is different categories, you know. Not only, you know, I just have, for example, um, ESP, I can have ESP, double ESP, I can have regular ESP, I can have standard ESP, depends, you know, a lot of things under each one of them. I'm going a little bit fast because this is just a review slides, a review presentation order just to, to let you ask some more question, you know, just to, to let you to remind what question you need to ask, you know. In order just to screening and sorting between artificial lift, you know, some publication is, is published, you know, this is the, in, 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 in the red board, this is in this column, this is a criteria while I need just to consider for artificial lift system. For example, for the lift system, what is the maximum operating depth I can run my lift system? Honestly speaking, not all artificial lift can be producing or just uh, 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 lifting the wells from the same depths. For example, some wells or some artificial lift, it will work very fine for shallow wells. Some other can be work very good for deep walls. Some other can work very good in medium walls, you know, and so on. But also, not only the depths as a factor, because the depths factor was some other factor. When I selecting first, my first choice, I say, okay, what is the depth of the well? I say, for example, my well depths, it's 19,000 feet. Then I start to say, oh, 19,000 feet, it's not a good, for example, for road lift and for, for the other artificial lift, maybe plunger lift only. Or I can say this is 17,000 feet. 17,000 feet is hydraulic can use, plunger can use, gas lift can use, road lift can use. Then I, I, I need to go to the other parameter. What is the bottom hole temperatures? Because the bottom hole temperature effect on that type of artificial lift because some of that artificial lift using a rubbers inside their divide, down hole device, rubber or just elastomers or some something, you know, or just certain type of steel can affect with the temperature. Is the temperature suitable or not? Before temperature, then I need to know production volume. Yes, for example, road lift system can run to 16,000 feet, but at 16,000 feet, it's not capable to produce 7,000 barrel per day. 7,000 barrel per day is at the maximum production for this technology and so on, you know. You need to consider all that parameters in red column, you know, if you look to the red column, it's written in red. You need to con consider all that, what's the corrosion, what's the gas, sand or solids, fluid gravity. It's, it's when I lifting heavy fluid crude oil, it's the same like when I lift light crude oils. Or, or different, what the surface I need is there is uh, required in order in case I have a problem down hole, it's required a rig or I can do, uh, do rigless using wireline operations, using uh, 
some slick lines using crane, using whatever, what type of power to run this system. It's, it's, it's required electric or it can be engine, diesel engine, gas engine, and so on. Is this system applicable for offshore or limited? For example, some system is limited for offshore, even if it's used for some offshore platform, but is not recommended because it's limited application, limited use like the road lift system and so on. At the end, how much power I need to produce, to use to produce this system and, and the efficiency of that one. This is generally speaking about artificial lift money. If there's any question at the general before I go to road lift, it's more than well, because I start to go road lift and then ESP. Yes, we can take uh, one question. Um, is artificial lift different from secondary and tertiary all uh, recovery methods? For sure, yes. Artificial lift is completely different than primary, secondary, and tertiary recovery. Primary, secondary, or tertiary recovery, you are dealing with the reservoir inside the reservoir. You are improving the recovery factor of the reservoir. But the artificial lift is dealing in the well pool. It's lifting fluid from the bottom of the well to the surface. There is big difference between secondary, tertiary, and, and, and our primary recovery. Artificial lift can be used with all of that. With the primary recovery in, in the first stage of the well, I can use artificial lift. Because artificial lift is dealing from with the fluid when it's entered inside the well pool. Secondary recovery, it's how to improve the recovery inside the reservoir, how to maintain pressure, how to increase the recovery factor and so on. Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, before proceeding, uh, we have another question. Why is artificial lift required for self-flowing wells? Yes, artificial lift is required for self-flowing wells if the well is not capable to produce the desired production. For an example, I have a well with a certain productivity index and these wells can produce 100 barrels per day with a bottom hole flow pressure, for example, 2000 PSI. And uh, this 2000 PSI equals hydrostatic head plus well head pressure plus pressure loss. If I want to increase the production from the well, according to the well productivity, then I need to reduce the bottom hole flow pressure according to the inflow. If I reduce the bottom hole flow pressure to from 2000 to 1500, then 1500 will not be able to lift this as a new fluid to the surface because this 1,500 is less than the hydrostatic head plus the pressure loss plus the well head pressure. Then I need artificial lift for self-flowing wells if I want to increase production from this well and the bottom hole flow pressure will not be capable with a new production to lift the flow to the surface. Okay. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, I think now we can proceed with the session. Thank you. Okay, let me just uh, give you some quick overview about one of the main artificial lift technique used worldwide. According to the oil publication statistics and so on, they said the reciprocating sucker road pumping system, it's applied for over 70 to 75% of artificially lifted wells worldwide. Uh, almost my, more than 99.5% of the worldwide country found its lifting using the reciprocating road lift system. Why? I will show you why in, in the next slides or just in, in after a couple of slides. The reciprocating road lift system, it's one of the oldest, not only the main common type of artificial lift, it is the oldest type of artificial lift. If you look, so these pictures in the right, in the top right, this is taken from the old Egyptian history, you know. Look to that one. It is a beam, reciprocating beam pumping system. This is, you see, this is a walking beam, this one. And this is here is the horse head, this one. And we have the road inside the world, this one. This is a bump I will show you later on. This is a prime mover, the man going up and down. Then it's used since more than 5,000, 7,000 years 
technology improved up to reach to something else like that. The reciprocating road lift system, some people called bump, uh, beam bumping system, some other called sucker road only bumping system, but I named the reciprocating because it's reciprocating going up and down. Reciprocating road bumping system, it's belong to the mechanical assist group of artificial lift. Okay, if it's mechanical artificial lift group, what is it? What does it mean by reciprocating road lift system and, and sucker road bumping or sucker road bumping system and so on? And what it is? The reciprocating bumping system, as, as you see the pictures here, have some surface component and downhole component. The sucker road bumping system, as I said, the most popular type of artificial lift system. Is a system using surface equipment, surface bumping units, convert the rotary motion of the prime movers, either the prime mover can be motor, can be engine, whatever type of prime mover, the rotary motion of that convert to reciprocating up and down. It's in order to activate downhole pumps and these downhole pumps is creating two type of pressures across the bump. One pressure below the bump is just to reduce the bottom wall flow pressure to allow the formation to give me the desired production, plus generate or create another discharge pressure above the bump in order to allow the flow to produce flow to the surface. Okay, then what's the application? If you, if you remember the table I mentioned before, I will, get, I will go quick here about this application. Road lift system is the most popular artificial lift system. For that reason, you found its application can be used for heavy, medium, and light crude oil. Then it can be used for all type of crude oils. No limited for crude oils for road lift system. Maybe the design of the bomb will change. Yes, not the same times, same types of system can be used for the say all type of, of fluid. No. With a different type of load, I need to look to the different type of bump, different type of configuration, different type of, of reservoir. Sand, yes, it can be used for high sand content. And next session, we'll talk in details about how to handle sand. Because sand is the big enemy to all type of artificial lift. Not only the road lift, but with the road lift, yes, it's, there is a problem, but it can handle, can handle sand. There is a lot of wells, for example, near to us here in the Middle East, in, for example, in Oman. If you look in Oman, Oxy, and some other area, there is a well running continuously with a very high sand content. If we stopped, when you stop the well for any reason, have some failure, some like that, we found the sand will cover the bottom of the bump plus two, three joints. In this case, we need work over. However, we'll talk in details in the next session about sand. Not only that, also the gas. Gas is a problem for majority of pumping system, you know, have a wide range of application for the fluid level. This one of the artificial lift can be run while the bottom hole flow pressure can only few PSI, two PSI, three PSI, it can be run or can be um, run, this, this system can be run and so on. You know. Have a wide range of, of application for production can produce from one barrel per day, there is a lot of stripper wells in the United States and Canada and some other area produce five, six barrel and so on. In the same time, there is a lot of wells can produce 7,000, 6,000 barrel per day. They have a, a wide range of, of production application. Can be used for vertical wells, horizontal wells, slant wells, hot uh, fluids, cold fluids, all type of that uh, fluids and so on. You know. Advantage? It's high, have a very high system efficiency. That's mean uh, the power loss across the system, it, it's low, you know. It is compared to ESP, compared to gas lift, compared to jet pump and so on. It's very easy to optimize the system. The optimization for this system, it's uh, very easy to do it and, and optimization available even remotely, you know, from your home, from computers. You can change the pumping parameter, you can change the speeds, uh, you, you can know what's going down holes, you can do your well testing from mobiles, you know, how the well is produced, how much produced, what is the estimate, all that's estimated huh? uh, with, with a very good accuracy. What is the bump intake pressures 
and so on, you know. It can be increase the pressure, lifting the pressure uh, against whatever well head pressures you have. It's a positive displacement, you know. It's displace uh, fluid after fluids and so on, you know. Have a very wide flexibility of application. If I design the well to produce, for example, 1,000 barrel per day with a depletion drive reservoir and suddenly I found the reservoir is not capable to produce 1,000 barrel per day. Instead, to change the system, it can adapt to the system to produce 100 barrel per day from 1,000 to 100 with the same with the same equipment, with the same condition and so on. Have a, it's have a very high salvage value after the well is depleted and, and so on. You know. For sure, like other type of artificial lift have some limitation, like a crocked wells, it have a potential tubing uh, and, and road wires because what's connecting or, or moves the transportation or just reciprocating motion from surface to the bottom downhole bump, this downhole bump, it, and this road string, the road string transfer the reciprocating motion from surface to downhole bumps and this inside the tubing, then you have a potential for wheel. Gas, gas have a problem, you know. But currently with a new technology, you can use a road lift system with, with very high gas liquid ratio walls. Also have a limited uh, uh, capability for running dips because when we are increasing the pump or just producing from deeper wells, it's mean I use longer road string, longer road strings in the load will be increased. And this is steel or fiberglass, whatever type have a limitation for just a, a lifting capacity or, or lifting like that. Environmental, have a well hit here and have stuffing box can have a leak or some sand production and so on. Then how it is working, what this type of, 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 of artificial lift, how, how this type of artificial lift can be work and, and so on, you know. Let me just, let give you some hints about how it's working because the main important for this system is the downhole pumps. Downhole pumps is the heart of the system. The downhole pump is a reciprocating moving up and down. How it's reciprocating move and down, up and down? It's reciprocating move up, up and down by the motion, reciprocating motion is creating by the surface unit. But how the reciprocating motion of the surface units it is transferred to the downhole pump? It's transferred to the downhole bump via the road string, this road string. Then the main component of my system is downhole pump, second road string or the road string, the bumping unit, the surface bumping units, plus the well head and some controller and the prime mover. Four main component of the bump, if one of them is missing or failure, the system will not produce. Downhole bumps, road string, pumping units and prime movers. Downhole pumps, it is hard for all artificial lift system. When you are selecting your artificial lift system, you need to pay more attention about the downhole pumps as a configuration, as a meteorology, as a size, um, whatever, name. For second road bumps, the downhole bumps have five main components. What these five main components for the downhole pumps? This is the downhole pumps. This is breaking to two pieces here, you know, just in order to show you what is the main component of the downhole pumps. Have what we call the outer diameter, this is called the barrels of the pump, which contain all this connection, plus the plunger, this is sealing elements, plus two valves. One called the traveling valve and one called standing valve. This traveling valve and this standing valve. If you look to this one, this is a traveling valve and standing valve. It's identical. It's identical valves. Each valve of them, it's one way, one way valve, what you call a check valve, can permit the fluid to move from bottom to the surface. Inside this valve have two main pieces, you know, ball and seats inside the valve. Here inside the valve, have the pole and seat. This is the seat and this is the pole inside the valve. Inside the valve in this one and you are installed inside the valve like this and you are tightening the connections like this connection. And when the fluid is just come to the bottom, 
it's lifting the ball. You see the ball is lifting the ball. When it's lifting the ball, then the float can be go in, in, uh, to the pump through the traveling valve. This one through so this one traveling valve and fill just inside this traveling valve. Sorry, and fill inside this one inside this one. And this standing valve, it has the same function of the traveling valve. But when one of them is open, the other is closed. Let me show you that by some animation order just to understand how it is working, this, this device and this bump together. This is a standing valve, this one. This is a traveling valve, this one. This is a pole and the seat here. This is a, the, the blue one, this is a plunger, this one. This is a red one, this is a barrel, this one. And this is black one, this is a road string from here up to the surface. Once this bumping is go up and down, this is just the bump going up and down. Going up is called upstroke, going down is called downstroke. What's happened and how the bump is running for going up and going down? Let us just to focus in upstroke. We are going upstroke, going upstroke like this, that means this ball is closed. If this pole is closed in upstroke, what will happen below the pole? The pressure here will be low. Then what will happen with, with this pole? The pressure below the pole will be higher than the pressure above the standing valve. Then the flow here is entered the pump. What's happening in downstroke? Just focus in this. In downstroke, this is start traveling valve go against fluids, you know, and against the flow. When this flow direction is changed, it's close this valve because the valve of the traveling and standing valve open by delta B and change by, 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 by and close by change direction of the flow. When this is closed, this valve is moved against clothing area. Then it is, when it's make, moving against clothing area is creating a pressure built up here. When it start to create a pressure built up below this valve, this valve will be open and the fluid below the valve transfer to the fluid above the pump. This is just going up and down. Up plus down called one stroke. Going up called up stroke and going down, we call it down stroke. This is a boiler seat just I show you in, 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 in before you. Then for downhill bumps, remember I inform you that for road lift system, it's there is a wide application for road lift system. It can be used for heavy crude oil, for light crude oil, for medium crude oil, can use for gas, for sandy oils, it can use for deep oils, for hot oils, for cold, cold oils. For that reason, you need the manufacturing thinking or just looking to have different type of pump, each pump suitable to work in a different environment, capable to work in a different environment. Then in the market, you will find plenty of downhole pump configuration. Not only the size. There is a size starting from one over eight of inches of the pump, you know, or just one quarter of inch, whatever size you need, you can, you can create a few. One and a half inches, one and a quarter inches, uh, and, and two inches, uh, and so on, you know. Not only that, as I said, there is a configuration of the pump and the inside parts of the pump also there is different configuration of that. Not only that, this is a pump and there is also the road string, which is connecting the pump to the surface equipment. This is a standard road string you can find in majority of the world. But currently with a new technology, this road string also, it's have more type of road string. Instead to have a, a jointed road string like this, we have what you call continuous road string. Road string from bottom to the top, have only one connection at the bottom and one connection at the top. Why I need this continuous road string instead to use that? This one is rigid, not easy to bend it and so on. What for deviated walls? What if I need application for horizontal walls, for severe deviation walls and so on? Then this is type of what you call continuous road, endless roads, different names, you know, but it's continuous sucker roads. It can be used, which is improved the application for the reciprocating road lift system and so on. Not only that, <laughs> even in the, in the surface equipment, currently not only this type of artificial lift or just bombing units in the market, because some of the operators say, okay, what if I need a high production, 
high production, this type of beam pumping system is limited for the length of the stroke because the production of this type of artificial lift is a function of stroke length, bump size, and speed. Then one of that is, you know, is a limited for the stroke lanes and so on. Then some of them will say, okay, instead to use a very rotating equipment like that, and you know, maybe have some, some limitation and so they are introducing to the markets vertical lift pumping unit. For example, this can be reached stroke lanes, for example, here to 200, 240, but it will be a big, big, huge pump. Some type of this artificial lift can reach to surface stroke lanes to 360, 370, and so on. Not only mechanical, you have a mechanical, you have hydraulics, you have combination between mechanical and hydraulic. However, I want just to, to let you know that in the market now, with a new technology, the envelope of artificial lift application is changed. If you start to read in the book, old book, book published since 20 years or more years, you will find in, in all that book, you say the reciprocating road lift system can be used only for shallow wells, low production, no gas or low gas. Currently with a new technology, this can be for use for deviated wells, not only deviated wells, horizontal, even horizontal wells. For high gas rituals, yes, now, now currently road lift system using to deliquify it gas wells and for high gas rituals, for high uh, sandy wells and so on. Deep, yes, for deep wells also. And, 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 and so on. Before I just I go a little bit more in that, I like just to give you some hint about completion. Well, some people start to design artificial lift without considering the completion which we plan to run this artificial lift inside. The completion is a very important part in designing the artificial lift. Selecting the right completion from the beginning to suite the artificial lift will help you a lot in optimizing your operating for your artificial lift system and surfing your artificial lift system and so on. Quickly, and in, in for road lift system for the main component for the, the, the well completion, I, I, I must have tubing like that. I must have sitting nibble. Why I need to have sitting nibble? Because a bump, when I run the bump inside the well, this downhole bump should be stop at a certain depth, stop at a certain point. The point while the bump is stopped at is, it's called sitting nibble. Function of the sitting nibbles is explained in details in the video uh, you can download and watching this video. Plus what you call something called tubing anchor catcher. This reciprocating road lift system going up and down. Since it's going up and down in the fluid load, over the tubing will it change with the pump reciprocating up and down. Change of fluid over the tubing that makes the tubing can be moved, movement up and down. But to prevent the movement of the tubing and to keep the tubing under tension, we use what you call tubing and cockatch. Even that is explained very well in the videos and so on. In a very simple technique, very simple wells, just shallow and so on, you need only tubing and sitting nibble for the road lift system. This one of the making the road lift system more popular was very simple, not only in the system itself, even the completion type of the artificial lift of the system itself. All what you have, you have the bump, road string connecting together, run inside the wells and sit in this sitting nibble. As, as I mentioned before, you know, if you have deep wells in the upstroke, remember, Plungers or traveling valve will be closed since all the fluid load inside the tubing will be lifted by the road string. Then will be no loads over the tubing, then the tubing will be contract. In the downstroke, standing valve will be closed and standing valve is connecting to the bump which is standing at the sitting nib. Then all the fluid load will be moved to the tubing, then the tubing will be expanded. You know. Tubing moving up and down makes tubing buckling like this. Tubing buckling, the road will be under tension while it's lifting flow. Then will be a tendency of the road to be have some friction between the road and the tubing. Then you have some erosion between here and there. In order, just this, this is real pictures, you know, of the tubing and, and the road 
the world land without tubing agriculture. Tube, tubing coupling is overloaded like this. It's all inside and start to have split like this. Road now itself coupling is, is just overloaded and tubing like that. And I lost a lot of, a lot of equipment inside the well and so on. In order to avoid that or reduce that, uh, that risk, they are using what we call tubing anchor culture. Then tubing anchor culture run inside, it's it should be run below the sitting nibble in some cases based on design, based on well condition, based on well plumbing, uh, whatever you have. Sometimes you put above the sitting nibble one or two joints or below sitting nibble one or two joints is ideal. This, when we are sitting like this, is keeping, fixing the tubing with the casing and keeping the tubing always under tension, not moving while the, the, road, the fluid load it change over the tubing and so on. In some other case, some other condition, you know, the people is want to produce from two zones, two different zones. There is also for road lift system capabilities to run what we call selective completion. You run with one string like this, with two what you call sliding sleeve or one sliding sleeve sitting nibble. Then you have the ability either to produce these two zones or these two zones commingly, or just you produce one zone and isolate the other. Not only that, currently also, there is uh, plenty of wells running with two completion, two, yeah, two tubing string inside the well with two bombing units going up and down and produce these wells and so on. Down all bumps, the, there is a different type. Yes, there is a different type, different configuration. Please try to refer to the videos while I explain very well what's the difference between topple down, top anchor, or bottom anchor road lift system. It's a very important when you are selecting the bomb down hole pumps. For example, if I have sand, it's not suitable to select this bomb if I have sandy wells. In case of sandy wells, I need to select this one. Why? Because if the well is stopped for any reason, the sand will settle between the bomb and the road with the time the sand will fill this area. And in case of any failure for the bomb or I want to retrieve the bomb, if I want to make a maintenance, I cannot retrieve this bomb because the bomb will be stuck. And so on, you know, <coughs> between all these type of bombs and so on. This is called the tubing bomb. Part of the bomb is run as the part of the tubing and so on. You run the sitting nibble, sorry, the standing valve in, uh, in each time. Not only that, because the sucker road lift system currently can produce 7,000 8,000, 6,000 barrel per day. Then bigger bumps sometimes is required and the bump size may be bigger than the tubing size. Then I will be not able to run the bump or the plunger the tubing. Then I run the bump with the tubing from the beginning with the well completion. This is what we call oversized bump and so on. Then in the market, there is a plenty of bump, bump size, bump configuration. For that reason, the API start to make some special designation for the bump. If, if there is a plenty of size of bump, plenty of type of bump. Bump can be held from bottom. Bump, another bump can be held from tubing. There is a bump can be what we call tubing bump, broad bump. Then the API define that and you will find in the API book what mean of, of each type. This is an example. Each bump, you need to specify this bump I run in what size of tubing because for example, if this bomb is insert bomb, uh, there is a limitation of tubing size to run inside it. What size of bomb? What's the bomb configuration? This is all the letters give to you what's the bomb configuration. What's the parallel length of the bomb? What's the plunger length and so on? This is another, I will show one example just to explain to you what's mean of, of that designation and so on. For example, this is an ABI designation for subsurface Sucker road bomb called 25 150 RHPC 12532. This is also in the video in, in details, and there is a chart in the video while you can select and give you the meaning what mean of R, what mean of H, what mean of P, what mean of C. No, there is C, and there is M, there is a, B, there is A. What mean of each letter, then you can select and show. For example, 25 is means that this pump it will run inside tubing 278. One and a half inches is mean 150, this bump size inside the enter of the bump, of these bumps inside the enter is 100, uh, 1.5 inches inside the enter of this one. 
this bump got what we call R, it's road bump, insert bump. H, the barrel length, the barrel, sorry, thickness inside. It's thin like this or heavy like that. P, the bump is hold from bottom or from the top. B is from the bottom. C, this type of holding the bump inside sitting in the it's a cup type, is a mechanical, is a plastic or whatever. 12, what's the length of the barrels? Five, what is the length of the plungers? Three, what is the length of top barrels, what you call extension? And two, it's what is the length of two barrels. There is a video about that, you know, I in one of my video about road lift system. And also, if you not understand in the, in the next session, please write your questions. I can answer all whatever you have. And as I mentioned before, we have continuous roads. There's different metallurgy, there's different grades uh, according to the API. There is a solid road, there is a hollow road, and there is a fire pass, so on. This, you know, just I like to give you a picture about continuous road, you know, instead to use. A jointed road like this, the people use continuous roads. Usually, the problem of the continuous road is handling. How to handle as a well side, how to handle during running, during pulling of the wells, and, and so on, you know. And you have a special, you know, design and special connection. And this one is eliminating all that coupling, eliminating that coupling, give a, a good flow uh, resistance for the flow inside the tubing, between tubing and and the road string and, and so on. This is a bombing unit and I mentioned the bombing unit before, you know, there is different type of bombing unit. Even since different type bombing units, there is different API bombing unit, model number. Each number will explain what type. This, if you look to the type, this is completely different than this one. It's called conventional, this is called air balance. Different, same, same in, in, in concept, but different in configuration. Look to that, look to this one. This one is different than this. This one is different than this. How you differentiate, how to do that, why we are designed. Then ABI defined that with a different letters and numbers, you know. Letters is indicating bump types like this here, C conventional, whatever. And number indicates the bumping capacity. What is the capacity of this bump? What's the capability of that bump? This bump can lifting how much loads? What's the load the bump can be lifted? This can be lifted. One ton, two ton, 10 ton, one pound, two pound, thousand pound. How much height for stroke lens can go up and down? Then function how much maximum production I can get from this bump. For example, this one, it's a conventional type. You know, this, this bump bigger. If we see the API designation, it called C1280 D365192. What mean? C is this type of bump is conventional bump. 1280, that means the gear reducer of this bump, the torque can, the maximum torque can get over this gear reducer to rotate. This equipment is one, is, you can multiply this with, with, with 1,000, 1 1.28 million inch pound. What else, you know, I have, what is the maximum load I can lift it? Load, the load in down hole is the load of the float plus the road, load of the road string. How much load this can be lifted to that? What is the maximum stroke length for this pump and so on? Plus the prime movers, prime mover, the motor or the engine which is drive all that systems can be engine like that. Engine can be gas engine, diesel engine, some people use gas coming from the casing and just running this diesel engine, connecting to the bombing unit, run the bombing unit, some other using electric motor like this. And so even the well head of the road lift system is a very simple well heads, like you see like here, you must have what you call PUP, pro out preventer, plus stuffing box, because this bomb going up and down, going up and down, then the road string going up and down. We need something, you know, to allow the road string going up and down meanwhile, bring the float to go from up. Then that a piece of what you call a uh, stuffing box, stuffing box, piece of equipment inside this one, a small rubbers, the rubbers tightening above. This is a very polished piece of pipe 
can go up and down, and this tight with a certain torque, certain tightening, and now this going up this escape, and, <laughs> and so. When you design the system, you need to consider all the parameters, well productivity, BVT, float types, well completion, and, and so on, you know. As I mentioned before, the bump displacement of this bump is a function of what? Is a function of the stroke length, but not surface stroke length. It's a bottom hole stroke length. Why is the bottom hole stroke length? Because this stroke, surface stroke length transfer to the bump via the road string. The road string is a steel or fiberglass. Road string is, is lifting road it is himself and lifting float. These have some stretches. The float have some elongation. Then I lost a part of my surface stroke until I reached to downhole stroke plus some other factor effect on that. Then this, this stroke length this is a bottom hole, what's called bottom hole stroke length, plus the speed, how many times going per minute up and down, up and down, up and down plus diameter of the plunger, what's the plunger diameter here, plus the mechanical efficiency, this is a bump. Any type of bump, worldwide, whatever type, surface down all, second road, ESP, whatever, have a certain mechanical efficiency. Then if this bump mechanical efficiency, 80%, 90%, 50%, and with the time, the mechanical efficiency is reduced, then I need just to calculate this as mechanical efficiency, plus volumetric efficiency at the gas and so on. But I need you to, to keep something in your mind. There's a bump displacement. When I talk about, I say a bump, bump displacement, then the bump displaces fluid from the bottom to inside the tubing. At what? At the bump condition. Bump condition is completely different than the tank condition. Then the fluid at the bump condition, it's present at high pressure, high temperature. As the tank in the surface condition, the float is present as a standard condition. It's standard temperature, standard well, standard pressure, and so on. Then whatever the gas you have here in solution, when it reach to the tank, there is, will be no gas inside the solution. Then the volume of the float at the bump completely different than the volume of the float at the tank. The function between the float as a bump and the float as the tank, it's what we call formation volume factors, or, or sorry, oil volume factors is beta O. Then I need to divide it, the bump displacement over the beta O in order just to give me exactly well production barrel per day at standard condition. V here is, is give to you what? V it's uh, at barrel per day at reservoir condition, as a bump dips condition. But Q production per day at stock tank condition. This is called stock tank barrel per day. Here it's called only barrel per days. Barrel per day at the bump condition and so on. Okay, there's different softwares, you know, can be designed <laughs> the systems. If there is a time, you know, maybe the next session or session after, I can start to run some software like this and show you how it's working and how it's running and so on. Any question regarding a road lift system? Uh, yes, we actually have two questions. Um, what uh, what types uh, what type of gases can have bad effect on road pumps, and how can the effect be reduced? How can the effect what? Sorry. Uh, how can the effect of these gases uh, be reduced? Ah, oh, how can be reduced? Okay. Okay. Whatever type of gas. Because you know, here it start if we start about gas problem or for the bumps, whatever type of bumps, we need to talk about two categories. First, volume of gas. When the volume of gas increase is reducing the volumetric efficiency. The first action, first problem, reducing the volumetric efficiency. When the volume of gas increased more and more too much, is making what you call gas look. Gas look, it makes the pump not produce. The two valves of the pump, the two valves like this traveling and standing, will be always closed. Why? Because the gas will be trapped between the two valves. When the gas trapped between the two valves, remember, 
I said this valve will open by delta B. Then the pressure below the valve will be higher than the pressure above the valve in order the valve to be open. The gas is a compressible fluid. If the gas is a compressible fluid, then in the downstroke, this valve is compressed the gas. But in the case of the condition of gas, look, the pressure below the bump even compressed the gas is not reached to or equal the hydrostatic head of the pressure above the bump from here to the surface. Then the valve reached to the bottom of the downstroke, and meanwhile, the pressure below it is it's, it's still low. Then in this case, the valve still closed and the blow valve still closed. Going up and down, still closed. What we call, this is bump, look, bump of a bump cannot produce. Then the volume of the gas effect on the bump, initially effect to reducing volumetric efficiency because a part of the bump will be filled with the gas. For example, if you have a cylinder of the bump, the, the volume of this cylinder, for example, it's um, one, one, one barrels. And usually in each stroke, you lift one barrel. In each stroke, you lift one, one barrel float. If there is a gas and the gas enter inside the barrel, then fill 50% of this barrel. Then in each stroke, instead to lift one barrel of liquid, you lift one barrel liquid plus gas. In 50% liquid, you, then you are lifting 50% only of your production. Then your volumetric efficiency is 50%. It's a problem of the gas. Not only that, there is some other problem in troubleshooting. I can show you what it's called gas bounding and gas interference and creating some buckling for the roads and so on and can be creating some more pressure. The gas was the time can be creating um, some more heat is not allows a plunger for lubrication because the plunger in order to move inside the bomb, you, you must have a small fluid, small lubrication with the gas, there will be no lubrications, will be heating and so on. How to reduce it? How to, 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 to just to run road lift system with high gas or ratio? First of all, there is different concept in this one. But first concept, try to avoid gas entering the bomb. First choice for you, run the bomb as a dips. While the bomb intake pressure should be higher than the bubble point pressure. If the bump intake pressure is higher than the bubble point pressure, that's mean will be no gas, free gas as a bump intake. But really this case, it's not an easy to achieve. Usually you can achieve is very high active well drive reservoir. And so because I run artificial lift to deplete the well, to reduce the bottom hole flow pressure. Then in majority of the well, the bump intake pressure will be below the bubble point pressure. Then what I need to do, try to run the bump as deep as possible. Why I run the bump as deep as possible? Because I like to be as far as possible as a bump intake pressure from the bubble point pressure. Because as far as possible you be from the bubble point pressure, the volume of free gas will be reduced. And also, I, maybe I'm not able to achieve that. Second, or another option, try to run. This bump of road lift, sub lift bump is a mechanical bump, completely mechanical, doesn't require the cooling to cool the bump. Then you can run the bump or at least the bump intake below the bottom of perforation. When you run the bump below the bottom of perforation, it where is the flow would come from the formation as a two-phase flow or just start to separate it in the well pool. When the flow starts to separate it and the whirlpool or two-phase flow, usually the gas have tendency to go up, not to go down. The float will go down and the bump will be below the perforation, then the bump will be in, in the fluid condition. Maybe I will not able to do that because there is some restriction, there is no rat hole, there is sand, there is a problem. Then run the pump as deep as possible with the gas separators. Try to run with the gas separators, but mean, mean important to have what we call separating the gas to the casing, the annulus of the tubing, and have a very good venting efficiency. Nowadays, with the new technology, there is a lot of type of bump can handle a very high gas or special type of downhole pumps, like a variable slippage pumps, like a gas compressed pump, and so on, which 
can be handled in very high gas or I don't know, I'm answering a question. Yes, thank you, doctor. Uh, we have also another question. Uh, hmm? uh, how do uh, road lifts uh, used to handle sand? Yes, how road lift used to handle sand? Uh, can I keep the answer for this for the next session? Because the next session will be specially for handling sand, for road lift and ESP, especially, and maybe also PCP. However, I will give you small hints about this and then details, explanation, details, presentation will be in the next session, uh, will be how to handle sand. First of all, in order to handle sand, it's like the gas. Try to avoid the sand to enter to the bump. Avoiding the sand to enter to the bump, then I need to use sand screen. If there is no gravel bag, sand screen in the, with the completion and so on, then in the bump, I need to use a special type of sand screen. Sand, which can be prevent the, sorry, screen, which can prevent the sand to enter to the bump. But sometimes the sand is fine sand. And if I use a special screen with a very small pores of the screen, maybe I plug the intake, I will be not able to produce this. Then there is a special downhole configuration in the bump, which can be allowed a few amount of sand to bumping through sand. It's special design for the bump configuration, special design for the bump metallurgy, special design for the clearance between plungers and barrels. This is, you know, some of a hint about how to handle the sand, because sand is a problem. Some people say, okay, I need to produce the sand and lifting to the surface. The sand is not a problem for the only downhole bumps. The sand can be a problem also for the surface. Some others say, okay, I will separate the sand, but with the time, the sand will be settled in the bottom of the well. With the time, the sand will be increasing and increasing, and we can be reached up to the perforation and we block the perforation. Then I need to find a way. Sometimes we, we, we do some, you know, some dual, what you call dual mechanism, dual action, filtering some of the sand downhole and produce some other sand. I can filter sand up to a certain size, and lift in the well, and some small fine sand I can producing with my special bump configuration, special bump size configuration. There is like, for example, Damba bumps and the special sand tolerant bump with waterfall, and, and some other special bumps, sand can be handled sand. However, next session will be really, we'll go in details about these hot topics about sand, and could be also gas. Any more questions? Uh, yes. Uh, how, how can we get the values of uh, efficiency factors? How we can improve the value of the efficiency or get the value of the efficiency yes. factor? Yes. Okay. When we talk efficiency here, you know, there is different name, different terminology about efficiency for artificial lift. If we start to go for road lift, different terminology. When I say total system efficiency is different. When I said volumetric efficiency is different. When I said mechanical efficiency. Let me just differentiate between the three. Total system efficiency, that means my total system, how it is efficient as a power or as a system, integrated system together. How I calculated that, how I know that, and, and how I differentiate it, how I say I have a good total system efficiency or bad total system efficiency, or if, if total system efficiency is, is reduced. Since it's total system efficiency, if it is reduced, for example, if my total system efficiency is 60% and um, after a while, five, six months, I found 50%. For, where is I lost this 5%? How I can differentiate? Then let me define first, what is a total system efficiency? Total system efficiency is mean. 
the power I use, the useful power I gained from the system to the power I gave to the system. What is the power I gained from the system? And what's the power I gave to the system? The power I gained from the system is the flow rates and the delta P I generated, the pump generated, what we call the hydraulic horsepower. This pump is lifting, for example, 100 pounds per day and creating delta B discharge pressure, 1,000 PSI using flow rates and pressure, I can calculate it, the hydraulic horsepower. Came to the end of the system. This is the beginning of the system downhole in the pump or the, or the end of the system in the downhole. What of the beginning of the system is the prime movers, is the engine or, or the motors. How much power input to the motors? This motor in order to run the complete system to produce my 100 barrel per day and the pump to create 1000 PSI as a Delta B, the system is required a certain horsepower. Assumed, for example, the horsepower according to the amp and the volt and so, for example, if the system input power calculating is 30 horsepower. And down hole, I calculate based on the pressure, based on the flow rate, I found 15 horsepower. Then 15 divided by 30 is give me 50 horsepower. Then my total system efficiency is 50, so give me 50%. My total system power is 50%. Then I know this system efficiency. Where is I lost the, this 50% of my system? I lost part inside the bump as I draw it. I lost bump uh, part across the road string. Is stretches, is friction. I lift the road strings in the surface. I lost the part in the bumping unit. The bumping unit in order to rotate themselves is required a certain power. The bumping unit have a certain bearing and certain alignments. Even the motor itself, you know, if one of them have some problems in the total system efficiency, what it is. Volumetric efficiency is a function of gas. How much volume of gas enters the bomb? If my bomb volume, for example, is 100, for example, or 10 barrels, the volume of the bomb is 10 barrels. If the, the bomb is full completely in each stroke with 10 barrel of liquid, then my volumetric efficiency 100%. If my bomb is full, full only with 90% of each capacity, then my volumetric efficiency is 90% and so on. Mechanical efficiency is a mechanical efficiency with equipment. This is a pole and seed. This is all this is steel. This is a mechanical. Some of them can have erosion. Some of them can have scratch. Some of them can have a leak. A part of the plunger can have a leak and so on. Whatever I have a problem with a mechanical efficiency can affect my bump mechanical efficiency. <coughs> Shukram. Any more question? Uh, thank you, doctor. I think we can uh, now proceed uh, with the session. Okay. Okay. Second main important artificial lift system is the electric submersible pumping system. The electric submersible pumping system or called ESP pumping system. Really, it's one of the main important artificial lift and using worldwide just as the, as the numbers, it's come after the road lifts, reciprocating road lift system. But as a volume of production, it's the, the first type of artificial lift system using worldwide to produce the high percentage of the worldwide production uh, was using Why? Because usually the, 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 the electric submersible pumping system is used for high volume wells. Then, if we start to compare artificial lift system, I said previously that the road lift system used was over 75% of the number of the artificial lifted wells. But if I said, for example, the, the volume of the daily production worldwide, what type of artificial lift produce more? It is electric submersible bumping system. 
what is the main component of electric submersible bombing system and what is electric from the name is electric submersible bombing system that's mean a centrifugal pumps bomb centrifugal it's 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 not a reciprocating not a positive displacement is a dynamic displacement depend in just in the centrifugal force creating some false uh, force velocity to the flow due to rotation centrifugals to the float inside the pump. The main component of this system is the downhole pumps. For all type of artificial, you need to have pumps and some other parts of, to operate the pump, to protect the pump and so on. What else? Intake, in road, in, in, in ESP you have the pump and since this is a closed, the intake of the fluids, you know, you must enter to the pump through a certain device here. It's called the pump intake. I, I will let you know what is the difference of this pump intake than the other. Seal section. It's electrical submersible pump. Electrical submersible pump, that means a part of this pump have some electric motor. This electric motor is submerged inside float. This float can be water. Can be 100% water. Can be water with with, with oil, can be water with oil with gas, can be oil with gas in. In order to protect this motor from the fluids entering to the pump, we need to have some seal section. The seal section, it's just transfer the rotary motion of the motors to the pump without allow the fluids to contact the motor in order to avoid burning the motors and so on. Plus, since this motor, electric motor, I need power, power cable to connect the surface power to the motor. Then there is a power cable connecting from the bottom to the surface. And this is what we call the down hole assembly for the electric submersible pump. It's the simplest down hole assembly for electric submersible pump. Majority of the people start to run what we call sensors down hole of the bomb. Sensor just, you know, monitoring. This you can run or you cannot run. But in order to run the system, you must have this main component, motor, seal, intake, bomb, cable. Sensor is used for monitoring, to monitoring the, the temperature, the pressure, the vibrations, all, all the required parameters and so on. All this is just, you know, interconnecting like a chain. If one of these components fail, the system will not run. Cable, pump, take, seal, motors. Okay? okay. This pump is a centrifugal pump. It is a positive dynamic pump. It is, it is, it is not a positive displacement, sorry, a dynamic pump. It's not a positive displacement pump. Then for all dynamic displacement pump, there is a certain curve Certain curve is a function of what? Function of production against the wellhead pressure. For road lift system or for positive displacement, you cannot find that. The, 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 the relationship is a straight line with little bit, you know, just change in the straight line due to some mechanical efficiency, mechanical problem. But for dynamic displacement, you will find all dynamic displacement bump of a certain what we call bump performance curve for centrifugal bump is a relationship between the head and between the flow. And each one of that curve represent one part of the bump. What is this one part of the bump? I will, I, will, I will show you on the next slides and so on. This is what we call the head. This bump lift how much heads, how much fluids above the bump. We need to remember this is a centrifugal pump and all type of the centrifugal pump, it's produce what we call, produce constant head. Constant head, why it's produce constant head? It's gonna produce constant head regardless of type of fluid. What's that mean? If I have a fluid oil, it's the same, like if I have fluid water, this bump lifts the same head, yes. This bump, if I have this bump, same size of the bump, 
same RBM of the bump, same configuration of the bump. If I run this bump in the fluids, it's completely waters. For example, I give you an example, it will lift this water in 100 feet. If I take this bump, the same bump, and I put the bump in another fluids oil, lighter oils, this bump will lift the same, this fluid with the same height like fluid. Why? Because the bump is working in the principle of centrifuge. It gives centrifugal force to the fluid by rotating equipment inside the bump. What is equipment? I will show you later on. Each bump have this type of curve, what we call bump performance curve. Each bump performance curve not only has a head of the bump, head against the flow rate, no. It represents the head against the flow rates and the pump efficiency against the flow rate and the brake horsepower against the flow rate. Also, please try to review the videos about, I have two videos I, um, you can download. It's about electric submersible pump. I explain this in details. Here I just try to give you some brief, some review about some important things in this type of, of artificial lifts. Okay, then each bump, as I said, you know, has a certain flow rates lifting to the flow to the certain head. When the flow rates is a change, the head is a change. With increasing the flow rate, the head, the bump can be lift is decreased and so on. Each one of curve of this bump is drawing as a certain RPM. That mean is draw as a certain frequency, certain hertz. You need to read that this bump at what hertz? At 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 70 hertz, and so on. Then you read the head of the bump from this curve plus the bump efficiency in, in that curve and the horsepower in the other side. Then each bump have different stage inside the bump. It's not like the road lift system. This bump have what? Have different multi-stage. Each stage of the bump lifting a certain head. This curve represent one bump stage. Then one bump stage in order to know how the number of stage this bump is required to lift my wells, then I need to know what is my production, what is the head per stage for that production, and then according to the head for one stage for that production, what is my net lift I need to lift from that wells, I divided my lift, my net lift to the head per stage, then I calculate, I say, okay, this bump required, for example, 100 stage, 200 stage, 150 stage, and so on. Then each bump of that is have a certain working criteria. This stage is a floating. Let me, you know, just, I will back again to this chart, you know, if you not understand. This one is represent a bump stage. Each one of these, this is a bump stage, this is a bump stage. Inside the bump, you can find 100, 200, 150, 130 of this stage, of this bump. The stage of the bump have two main components. You know, one is called rotor and stator, uh, uh, sorry, diffuser and impeller and diffuser, I will show you. For each curve of the bump, you need to design your pump and select your pump to run in what we call the best efficiency area. If you look to each curve, you found a certain area in the curve inside the curve with the different colors, highlighted with a different color. This is what we call the area at the highest efficiency of the bump. You need to design and to run the bump inside this area. The bump can be run outside, yes, can be run outside here or can be run outside here, but the bump mechanical efficiency will be less. The bump tier and wear and tear will be very high. Then the bump problems will be very high. Why? Because this is a stage of the bump, this is a stage of the bump, this is a stage of the bump. In the best condition, the bump stage will run in balance 
condition. Ideally, bump will be operated in light to moderate uh, thread, what you call it. This is a bump stage, and this is the outers of the bump stage of, of this bump. If this bump stage run in this case, that bump stage is not contacting the outer of, of the, the, the pillar or diffuser of the bump. If the bump run in this stage, then there are friction here. If the bump run in this case, then you have another friction here. Try to refer to the bump state to understand what's mean of that friction, what's mean of this friction. How to design the bump? For, for, for ESP, since it's a very simple bump, very simple equipment, very simple technique, it's not like the road lift is a downhole bump of the road lift, have almost more than 22 pieces, 22 parts, then the design is not an easy, half road, half load, half friction. Usually, uh, Baker Hughes or some other manufacturing is stated some certain steps in design the ESP equipment, ESP bump. He said in order to design your ESP equipment, there is a nine steps. Try to review this nine step. First step, it can be used for all type of artificial. Collect the analysis of data. I need to have the analysis data for that. Based on all productivity, determine the production and consequently bump tips. Also, this can be used for all type of artificial. Calculate the flow volumes. You need to calculate the flow volume, pump and take pressure. Same for all type of artificial. Lift. Calculate the total dynamic hits you can calculate. But from this point, the ESP start design to be considered, you know. Then I select the suitable bump. The bump can give me the design, desired lifting head at the best efficiency. Selecting the bump as the best efficient. Then I select the other equipment which can be running the bump or um, just uh, complete the bump condition and so on. This is starting point, as I mentioned, the willing flow you need to run and consider how much gas you need to consider when you are designing the bump and so on. You will find in the video explained in detail this one, you know, with some examples and, and so on. For ESP, the monitoring system, usually the main important to monitoring the AMP as a surface unit. AMP and real time monitoring for the AMP, for the pressure, for the temperature, down all temperatures and so on. Usually the some old AMPs, old chart, currently you can find these digitals, from all that charts can tell you, you know, here there is a gas, here is, there is a spikes of some problem, here is, here is some gas interference and so on from this one. There is some modern monitoring you can find in the surface, you know, even you can connect to your computers, your laptop, you can do a remotely optimization using all this data and so on. Any, any question regarding uh, just a quiz, quick overview about ESP because the time is running, we're running out of time. Any question? Uh, no, doctor, we can uh, proceed. Okay. However, if someone, uh, while you are reviewing the video, he, he, want, he found any question you want to ask, next session I will let you for the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, for, for that question. The other type of artificial lift, just what we call progressive cavity bumping system. The progressive cavity bumping system is one of the very main important artificial lift system usually used for heavy crude oil. When we start to talk about heavy crude oil or the people start to look about heavy crude oils or water or something like that, it came to their mind what we call progressive cavity bombing system. What is a progressive cavity bombing system and what's mean of progressive cavity bombing system and so on. The progressive cavity bombing system is mean transfer fluid by means of progressing through the bump. This is a bump and this is just cut way for the down hole bumps of the progressive cavity. And this bump have some helicals, what you call rotors and plus the other part is stators like this, have some cavity inside the stators and the helical rotors inside the rotors. When the floats come between the two uh, rotor and stator and rotor uh, rot rotates, it's compressed the float from one place to the other place, from one place to the other place and lifted to the surface. 
then transfer flow by means of progressing through the pump as a sequence for that reason, you know, it's called positive displacement pumping system. You know, it's, it, it's transfer flow as a sequence of small and fixed shape of float from one cavity to the other cavity, from one cavity to the other cavity and, and, and so on. Why it's, it's this type of artificial lip some people is, is liked and, and used in, in, in heavy crude oils and, and so on? Because this system have a lot of advantage really, especially as I said, for heavy crude oil and also for sandy wells. These have a very high total system efficiency compared to the other artificial lip. It's maybe you can consider it's the highest total system efficiency for the other art compared to the other artificial lip. Compared to road lift system, compared to the ESP and so on. You have the ability to produce the high viscous floats. It's one of the best artificial lift to produce high viscous float, sand, solids. There is no valves, there is no gas lock, there is no loops inside this one. There is no internal shear for fluids. To, to create emulsions, fluids, and so on, you know. It's a cheap system, really, because compare this one with the road lifts as a pump, as surface equipment, this is just a very simple motors and plus drive heads and so on, you know. The operating cost, or just sorry, the, the capital investment cost may be less 50% compared to the road lift and so on. Even it's small, you know, very small, there is not required no big, area you can move very easy from one well to well easy to install the portables and so on you know it's have some limitation for sure you know this type of artificial lift it's not popular like the road lift and ESP because they have some limitation one of the main limitation for this system is the dips why is this system have limitation of the dips look to the second point because it's limited to temperature why is limited to temperature? Look to the downhole component of the bump is rotor and stator. The stator is rubber, is elastomers. And rubber and elastomer with the depths, with, incre with increasing depths, the temperature is increased. The temperature is increased, this can be, cannot be withstand that temperature and so on. Then how is working? Is working by rotation. How is the tra rotation transfer from surface to the bottom? is transferred through the road string, similar to the road string of the road lift system with a special different in the connection design between the, the roads and so on. However, but it's a road string, then a steel pipe, steel floats running from surface to the bottom. It's, try to imagine if you have a road string running to the dips 6,000 feet and you rotate. What's the size of the road string? One inches, three quarter inches, seven, eight inches, then it, it, it's not an easy to rotate all that from surface to the downhole uh, as that depth, you know. Limited production compared to the ESP, to the jet bump. It's a high production compared to road lift system, but limited production compared to the ESP and, and gas lift uh, and so on. It's required really compared to road lift system, it required a fixed head above the bump in order to allow the flow to enter the bump. I said initially for the road lift system, it can produce with the fluid at the bump. You need only one, two, three PSI in order only to build the traveling or stand bump. Here is required at least 200, 300 feet above the bump to reduce. Then it's limited to draw down for the bottom hole uh, conditions and so on. Uh, application for sandy, uh, usually if you have a sand, high fluid, it's it's very, it's very good to use. Also, one of the of, of, uh, of limitation here is what we call, it's not an easy to use for light crude oil due to aromatics. Because light crude oil have a very high aromatic, which is, can be effect on elastomer of the road, can be uh, causing the road to be um, swelling and have some problem. I have a very good application in sand landing, uh, medium crude oils, uh, uh, dewatering gas wells. Uh, it can be used for a certain limits for, 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 for deviated wells and so on. And, and the main component of this one, as I mentioned before, the downhole bumps have two main components, rotor and steel. Rotor, this is a steel one with a very polished. 
stator is a fixed, the rotor is a rotating stator is a fixed part of this, uh, of the bump and so on. What else? You have downhole, you have the rod string from the bump to the surface. This rod string is, is similar to the sucker rod, the reciprocating bump rod string. Can be jointly rod string or can be continuous rod string and so on. What else? Surface equipment, surface condition. The surface equipment of this bump is equipment required to rotate the rod string in order to rotate the downhole pumps, in order also to keep this is the road string rotating without allow the fluid to escape from the surface. There is different type, different configurations. Try to refer to the video and you will, you will know, you will learn about what's the difference between each type and of the dry fit of the BC people. This is just animation about how it's running. This yellow, just this color is oil. This is the rotors and these are stators. When the floats come here, the rotor is push float from cavity to the cavity, cavity to the other, cavity to the other until to reach to the tubing and enter to the tubing and so on. There is a different configuration of this one, of the rotors and stator, yes. This is a symbols rotor and stator, one helical configuration like this, but there is according to the production, according to the configuration, we can have different configuration of the rotor and stators, and each one have a different application, each one have a different cost, if each one have a different um, um, running conditions and so on. Any question regarding the um, BCP? Uh, yes, we actually have one question. Uh, how is sand separated from hydrocarbons in the PCP? No, usually the, uh, for the PCP, we are not separated the sand because PCP is uh, one of the best artificial lift system to handle sand. However, if the amount of sand is increased, we will run sunscreen below the bar. But usually, you know, if we come to the sand, high, high amount of sand, uh, it's, it's the PCP is one of the preferred artificial lift system used. Why? Because a part of this bump is a rubber, plastic. Then the sand can be embedded in this sand, plus it can be handled, you know, with this one. However, up to a certain limit, you know, but with this one, we usually we run with sunscreen. And also in the next session, we'll try to cover this a little bit in details. Okay. Okay, thank you, doctor. Any more questions? No, I think we can continue. Okay. Okay, this is the last one today. I'll try just to, to show you about the gas. Gas lift, remember, we said the artificial lift have two main categories. One is a mechanical assist, like a bombing system. And we present three out of them. We presented the road lift system, ESP and the progressive cavity. We present two positive displacement is a road lift system and progressive cavity, and one dynamic displacement is a uh, ESP system. But gas assist, gas assist system is uh, what we call gas lift system. The gas lift system is one of the form of artificial lift system is really that's the most closely resemble the natural flow walls. It's similar to the flow walls. The only difference then I inject the gas. For the flowing walls, <clears throat> the bottom hole flow pressure, it's capable to lift the flow of the fluid, the fluid of the of the fluid inside the well up to the surface. But when the fluid gradient is start to be increased, then the bottom hole flow pressure will not be enough. With the gas lift, I injecting gas. When we're injecting gas in the well, then the gas is lightening the fluid inside the well. Then the average fluid gradients will be less. Then the pressure here, when it's reducing, will be capable to produce flow. It's almost similar, like in, 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 in behavior, like the flowing wells, with some different while I injecting gas as a difference. Is there is a different type of gas lift? Yes, there is a different type of gas lift. For good wells, uh, continuous producing wells, 
we are continuous injecting gas like this one, you know. We are injecting gas continuous, what you call continuous gas lift. But sometimes we have a depleted wells with high gas ratio. But this wells, whatever high gas ratio is a depleted, the reservoir is not capable to produce, flow is, 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 is not capable. Then from time to time, we do cycling injecting of gas and we have what you call intermittent gas flow, intermittent gas lift. What are the main components of the gas lift? The main component of the gas lift, I have gas lift valves inside the walls, just, and we have gas lift mandrel. Mandrel, this is outside this one. The mandrel is run at the part of the tubing. And with a slick line, wire line operation, I run a little on what's called the gas lift valve. The gas lift valve, it's, it's opened by certain techniques. There is different technique of gas lift valve, how to open. However, at a certain when I injecting gas inside the tubing, the one of the gas lift valve is open, allows the gas to enter inside the tubing and lifting the fluid inside this one. And I have more than gas lift valve inside the walls. All the gas lift valve is just during the normal standard operation will be closed except the lower valve, valve will be open, which is will be operating valve, the operating valve will be open. Well, then why I need to run the top valves? I need to run the top valve just to unload the well initially at the beginning and so on for the gas. This is just <coughs> a picture about how it looks like the mandrel and the gas lift valve inside the mandrel. This is the mandrel, which is connecting from here to the tubing to the tubing and the inside one, this one is a gas lift valve and you have a port here and inside also the mandrel, there is a port. Then at a certain, you inject the gas from here and at delta, a certain delta B predetermined, predesigned from the surface, the gas lift valve is open, allow the gas to enter inside the tubing, mix it with the fluid and produce the fluid. Also, you can refer to the uh, video about the gas lift and how it's working, you know. Then when the gas is the red one, is the gas, the gas lift valve is open, allows the gas enter to the tubing, mix it with the tubing fluids and so on. The surface <coughs> equipment, I have gas compressor because in order to compress the gas inside the well, I need certain compressor or if I have a well, gas wells with high pressure near to me, I will be used. But I need to compress the gas in order to allow to have high pressure here of the gas run inside the well, plus the well head pressure, plus the controller valve and so on. Any more question for gas? Uh, <coughs> yes, uh, we have uh, a final question. Uh, generally, can I control uh, production through the size of rod string or no? No, the size of the rod string, you cannot control production. You control production for the uh, rod uh, mm -hmm. lift, throw either the bumping speed, stroke per minute, the mm -hmm. down hole pump size, the size of the bump, bigger size or smaller size, and the stroke cleans of the surface equipment. Or if okay. you want just to run the wheel and in the timing modes, timers, you run, for example, 10 minutes, stop one minute, and so on, if you want. But controlling the, 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 the production, only three main parameters can control production for the road lifts. Any more questions? Okay, uh, no. Okay, so, other any more question, please try either to send to me or send to, um, next time, you know, in the first 15 minutes we'll, we'll, we'll plan to receive all your questions about that. Please try to review all the videos. The videos available, there's 10 videos, two uh, about um, general speaking about Introduction artificial lift and another eight videos, each two or three videos will talk specially about different type of artificial lift. Okay, thank you, doctor, for your time. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the session today. And uh, by now you have clearer understanding of uh, artificial lift technologies. So that's all for today. Now have a nice rest of the, of the day and best of luck. Thanks, Mario. Thanks for all of you.